Hey y'all, here OS Reviews. Today we're taking a closer look at the Hot Wave Cyber 9. This is a relatively affordable, rugged Android smartphone that sells for around 170 bucks. And like other rugged handsets, it's going to be waterproof, drop proof, so it's going to be more resistant to the elements, along with a pretty large 7,500 milliamp hour capacity battery, and it's powered by the MediaTek Helio P60, has 8 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigs of built-in storage, further expandable via a micro SD card, which are all pretty competitive in terms of specs, even comes with NFC, so you can use it for mobile payment, has a triple camera array on the back, which comprises of a 48 megapixel primary lens from Samsung, but the other two lenses are not quite as useful as something like a wide angle lens, which I would usually prefer. Still, we have a dedicated micro lens for capturing close-up shots, that's 5 megapixels, and then a third sensor that's dedicated just for the bokeh blur effect. Front facing camera is rated at 16 megapixels. And then again, the Helio P60, it's going to be clocked at 2 gigahertz. It's a 12 nanometer chipset. Last but not least, the phone is running on Android 11, but it has been customized with their skin on top of it, which we'll take a closer look at later on in this video. So this particular company, Hot Wave, we haven't really seen in the past, so they're not quite as well known as, for instance, Doji, Yumidigi, some of the brands like that, but they are competing in the same space, and they're based in Shenzhen, China, and also trying to, again, bring out pretty affordable, value-oriented phones. And we have just an inner compartment that uh, will have a QR code to learn more about the phone and then finally the cyber 9 pro is stamped proudly on top which by the way can be peeled off there is a pre-applied factory screen protector which is a nice little extra i've already set this up and started to use it since this is our review but just showing you guys what came in the box there's also a standard sim ejector pin usb power adapter usb type c charging and data cable along with a type c to 3.5 millimeter aux adapter because unfortunately there is no headphone jack like most smartphones these days Alright, so taking a closer look at the design of the Cyber 9 Pro, overall it is definitely echoing design elements from other rugged phones and kind of gaming phones as well, which have these purposeful lines, uh, but overall I think it does look quite good and has these obvious bumpers on the edges that is making it resistant to shock if you do accidentally drop the phone. But it is a HD plus resolution panel, which is a little bit higher than 720p instead of full 1080. The PPI is not going to be the sharpest in the world, but that combined with the uh, overall large battery does mean that you are able to use this phone for a pretty long time before it runs out of juice. Now the rear here also houses a lanyard strap, the loudspeaker, which unfortunately I think would have been better place on the side. It's not a stereo unit. Uh, and then these two accents here, they're not really LEDs, but still makes it look pretty interesting. Soft touch rubber texture that prevents fingerprints, pretty easy to grip. And the stripe here also houses the triple camera array along with the dual tone LED flash. The side here houses aluminum rails that also is advertising the rugged nature here of the phone along with the first customizable key. There is a slot for micro SD and SIM card. It's a dual SIM phone supporting nano slots. And then on the other edge, we have access to a volume rocker, power key, which are all made out of metal, pretty tactile and responsive. And finally, there is the side-mounted fingerprint scanner. The placement is pretty comfortable and easy to reach. However, this fingerprint scanner is rather thin. Because of the smaller surface area, sometimes I had to press once or twice to get it to unlock. But overall, it still works. Just for reference, we're going to compare it with some of the other recent rugged phones that we've reviewed, including Zeker's P10. Roughly similar dimensions, but the Zyker is a bit more expensive because it does have a slightly more powerful internals with the CPU and also a night vision camera. But again, this one here is only 170 bucks, so keep that in mind. One of its closest competitors would be the Yumidigi Bison Pro series, which also sells for around $200. So it doesn't feel too far off compared to those other phones in terms of form factor. And that's a demo of the fingerprint scanner. So it takes a second to unlock. And again, because it's a bit thin, it can be a little bit picky in terms of the positioning. If you are kind of putting it off a bit, it will kind of tend to not as easily register. But overall, it still works, does the trick. You can also use face unlock as well. Definitely been customized by Hot Wave. So all the accents here, in fact, are green, but you do have access to the essentials, including turning on or off wireless networks. There is also a dark mode, NFC, battery saving mode can all be triggered, as well as even a screen recording tool can be accessed in the notification shade. Now down below here, we can see that there are the standard Google apps pre-installed. Otherwise, there are a handful of 
have some utility tools which come preloaded. There is a tool bag app, but considering the rugged nature of the phone, I think it still is making sense. So you have access to things like a compass. There's also a sound meter that uses the microphone to know, uh, tell you how loud your environment is. Uh, also things like a height measure, which is using the camera to do some approximation and taking a look at some of these other utility tools very quickly. There's the voice recorder, which has a pretty cool kind of animated style of showing how loud the surroundings are when you are recording audio. And also things like the calculator also has been slightly customized compared to stock uh, in terms of its layout. But overall, you can see that the Helio P60 coupled with the eight gigabytes of RAM, and again, the 720p display, meaning that the processor GPU doesn't have to push around as much pixels, ensures a very fluid experience. So jumping back and forth between open applications is very fast and snappy. So for a phone of the price, performance is very good, I have to say. Now, one thing that this launcher though is emitting would be a drawer for all of your apps, but you can always download Nova Launcher, something else if you prefer bring that back. But right now, every app that you install will be pushed over to the home page and show up as a new icon. Even if you long press and go into home settings, there is no way to bring that drawer back. So one thing to keep in mind. What we do have though is like a Pixel phone. On the left side, you can have access to your newsfeed. Things like articles that you're interested in will be populated on the edge. Let's jump into the camera and take a quick look at the performance there. So as aforementioned, the primary sensor, 48 megapixels from Samsung, is pretty capable in terms of it does have a lot of resolution and detail. You can definitely get some pretty good looking shots, especially in outdoor environments. You can see the HDR even kick in, the skies, textures are preserved very well. And despite all of these tree branches, even if we're zooming all the way in, we can still see a lot of intricate detail. Sometimes it takes a moment for it to snap into focus, but there can be moments of slight over sharpening at times as part of the software that they're using but it's no denying that for again 48 megapixels you're getting a lot of detail the only critique i would say is the second and third lenses i don't find to be the most useful in the world uh, for instance i would have preferred instead of a micro lens they chose a wide angle instead but it is what it is the camera interface at least does give you a lot of options in terms of customization so under advanced settings we're able to uh, change things here including geotag continuous burst shot mode, anti-flicker under the more section here, including that's where HDR is located, in addition to accessing the aforementioned macro lens, uh, which interestingly, again, it sits as its own menu item instead of in the primary lens. If we zoom in, it doesn't automatically adjust over to micro, so you have to hit on that key. But indeed, under this particular mode, we can get a lot closer to our object that we're looking at, and it will still remain quite sharp. Take for instance this shot of a penny that I took, I was pretty pleased with the result. It's a fixed focus lens, but it just is allowing you to get a lot closer than what would be typically possible using the primary sensor. And here's a few more examples of that micro lens in action. You can even see the dust particles on the edge. So there are definitely times where it can be fun to try out. You can even change the aspect ratio to capture images at the 18 by nine aspect ratio, which is taking advantage of the taller displays on our phones these days. When it comes to video recording, you can record up to full HD, but unfortunately 4K is not supported in the settings out of the box. So all in all, I would say it's really not bad as far as the especially primary camera is concerned. In relatively brightly lit spaces, you'll get some better than average results considering the price point of this phone. Now, through that process, we are also able to tell that the fully laminated display, overall, it's a pretty decent quality in terms of brightness. I'm not having too much issues. Uh, considering this is a rugged phone, maybe it can get a little bit brighter, but still, if you are in moderate sunlight, it still remains visible enough. Colors are pretty saturated and vibrant, as well as giving us fairly wide and generous viewing angles. Again, it's not gonna be pin sharp, especially on a 6.3 inch panel, but in most cases, looking at images and videos, things are still enjoyable enjoyable enough. Demo of what it's like using it to watch back a video on YouTube and how the speakers sound like. So 
that the experience is not shabby, especially in terms of loading speed and reception quality for the antenna does seem to be quite strong. I was consistently getting almost full bars of Wi-Fi, as well as when I tried to use cellular with T-Mobile here in the Seattle region. No issues in terms of loading times at the very least. Speakers are also loud enough, I'd say, uh, although again, placement could be a bit better, but you can always use wireless headphones uh, to improve the experience. Generally speaking, the Helio P60 I think is perfectly capable. It's a very good contender with Qualcomm Snapdragon chips in the 600 to 700 series line, and we expect similar levels of overall fluidity and day-to-day -day usage, and that's the case here. And that means certainly for loading back web pages, you won't find any issues, even more complex ones like The Verge or New York Times with more ads, videos, and elements on the page. Yes, you'll probably have to wait a split second longer, but afterwards everything will load here just fine. Scrolling at the very least does feel pretty fast and responsive, and I can pinch in and out. Everything works as you would expect. Again, the 8 gigabytes of RAM also helps things to tick along pretty well, and you can even open up, let's say, 10 tabs in the browser, jump back and forth between them, and things are still largely retained in the system's memory. Now, in terms of additional settings, it is fairly stock looking, but the icon you can see here are slightly changed. Again, right now we are using gesture navigation, but I can bring back physical keys if I prefer. Additional gestures that you can use include three fingers to capture a screenshot, smart motion like flipping over the phone to mute and reject a call. Dura speed is a function in most MediaTek powered phones that will try and boost the performance if you're in games. And there's also a glove mode that will increase the sensitivity of the display. And that 128 gigs of built-in storage on the base model I think is also plentiful for most folks. Overall, battery life has been excellent. I could easily use this thing for a couple of days before I needed to really recharge it, even longer if you're just using it in standby and just taking an occasional call. Which, speaking of, the call quality thankfully is also quite good. The built-in microphones do have a bit of noise isolation to them, even if you're outdoors. Caller said they could still hear me just fine. The one caveat though is if you are in the US, I will mention that because of AT&T's pretty dumb policies, they are essentially not allowing you to use any phone that's not on their supported list of devices anymore. So this device, it will work perfectly with T-Mobile in the US, and then obviously it's a quad band GSM phone, so in other carriers around the world, just pop in your SIM card and you're ready to go. Finally, adjust the performance when it comes to gaming, and for that I'll first load up kind of a slightly more lighter game stack, and as a whole, again the P60 chipset is not shabby at all. It's far better than many of the other entry-level chips from MediaTek years ago. And again, MediaTek in general, although they used to have a lot of flack, they've been just getting more and more competitive, especially for lighter games and titles uh, with slightly less animations. And then again, you can play back more heavy 3D style animation games as well. Things like PUBG, Asphalt, you can definitely install and play on here. However, just keep in mind that you'll want to likely lower some of the graphic settings to get you a smoother experience and you have to wait a little bit longer in terms of the loading speeds uh, just because of the slightly more limited GPU compared to flagships but all in all really not bad and you can still get some decent gameplay on here there's no issues in terms of installing any current titles from the Play Store especially with the plenty of memory that we have on board. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the Hot Wave Cyber 9 Pro. A design that looks pretty good in my opinion, even though it doesn't have any LED lights, which would have made it, I think, even more flashy. But for a entry-level model in their current lineup, I think this is a very solid choice as far as performance is concerned. They do have slightly more higher-end phones as well, uh, including actually the Cyber 7 Pro, which despite the smaller name, ironically has more powerful internals, including the Dimensity 700. So that's a 5G enabled chipset if you're looking for a 5G phone. It doesn't necessarily bring anything we haven't seen before to the table, but overall the aggressively low price uh, would be one of the main considerations here. You can check out more details if you're interested. For now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.